So here's yet another self-portrait, and I'll let you just drool all over this fine specimen of humanity while we just talk about a couple of things. So one, most of the instructions for the process for how to do the grid-based self-portrait are typed up on the download that you can read through. Let me know if you have any questions or if anything doesn't make sense. What we're going to do in this lecture is talk a little bit less about the how to do it and more about general concepts. We're going to look at student examples, some things that have worked, some things that maybe you wouldn't want to do, and also kind of talk about what we're hoping to achieve. Part of what we're doing with that is giving you an idea of being able to select a photograph that's going to work well. And obviously this photograph works really well because you're just looking at it and you're like, wow, I want to break me off a piece of that. That's some delicious looking, okay, it's maybe not the most flattering photo ever. It's actually not a photo, it is a painting. We are looking at a painting that was a grid-based self-portrait. Chuck Close would make large format photographs, draw a grid on them, and then create a corresponding grid on a large canvas. In this case, it's about six or eight feet tall. Later in his career, the grid itself becomes a more important aspect of the final visual form. What we're doing is a lot like what we're seeing in the Zuckerberg glitch GIF over here. We're hoping to achieve what we see here, flat planes of color, but enough variation in those that when you squint at it or look at it sort of through the side of your eye, you're able to see the form. We still have a sense of volume. This is a color project. And one of the reasons we're doing a grid-based self-portrait, the grid is to allow you to analyze the color in your source photo. You're going to draw a grid on your source photo. Math measurements are included in the download. And then you're going to draw a one-inch grid on your canvas. You can see right away, though, that we are going to vary the scale, the resolution of our image depending on what we're depicting. So while we're going to start with a one inch square everywhere, you can see that if you want more detail, we can subdivide. We can create smaller units. In this case, we're going to take that one inch square and cut it into four half inch squares so that we can see things like the beginnings of a curve with the uh, forehead and where it encounters the hair. In other areas where there isn't as much information or it's detail that we don't care about, like say the door behind Scott here, you can collapse squares into two inch squares. So on your canvas, you can control the resolution by how much you choose to subdivide. If you subdivide, you can then find areas in the background that are of less importance and you can collapse those together. We're going for around 300 squares. Most people are going to be way over 300 because you're going to subdivide enough that you'll get more than that. But if you are subdividing in some of the background areas, you can collapse squares to make it a little more simple. If we have 16 units by 20 units and you didn't do any subdivision, you would wind up with 320 squares. So probably you're going to be over 300, but it's a good ballpark minimum to aim for. What we're doing then is looking at the color on our photograph and trying to account for all the different kinds of colors that are mixed in with that. On your face, obviously you're going to have a variety of skin tones in every square, but your job is to sort of figure out what is the average? What would I get if I blended all those colors together and then create a flat plane of a square that shows that? We want to use squares because we can expand and collapse just like the monitor that you're looking at right now. We have a bunch of little pixels. Those pixels can get large or small on our canvas, and that's how we're going to control the resolution. If you want, you can go nuts and have tiny, tiny, tiny squares. So you can see in both of these examples, they still started with a one inch square, but they subdivided half inch, then quarter inch. And by the time we get into the teeth and the jawline on this one, we're probably down to like a 32nd of an inch. 
Remember, though, that every time you cut a square, you're turning one square into four different colors that you have to mix. If you want to do four times as much work, I think that's great. But this is a color mixing assignment. And part of the reason that we're using the grid is so that you don't have to be able to draw really well. If you want to subdivide to get shapes that look more like the shapes in your photograph to preserve an angle or a curve or a crooked little smile, that's fine. But it's not really the goal of the assignment. The goal of the assignment is to create color mixtures that are going to make sense in what we call optical color mixing. Basically, does it pass the squint test? When I squint at both of these, I absolutely can see the face. I understand the volumes that are created. I understand the nose projecting forward and eye sockets going back and the curve of a forehead. All of that works, even though this one over here on the right is much lower resolution. This one actually got a better grade because though it is much lower in resolution, it still does the color really well. And we can see that in the way in which she's able to control the blonde color in the hair. Making shadows and darker values that still read as blonde, as opposed to over here where when she was trying to make it blonde but dark, it turned green on her and there wasn't any green in her source photo, so she wasn't able to control the color. Her skin tones are working really nicely, and I actually like the variety that she has where she's got warm tones and cool tones. And if you squint at this one, that face looks great. But this one winds up being just as good, in some cases better, because it's about the color mixtures and how faithful you are to your source, not how tiny you're making your marks in terms of resolution.